Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. I wanted to start a study on the book of Daniel. And I don't know if I'll go verse by verse or not. I might. I might but I'm certainly going to cover the chapters, go over the themes, go over the book. So this will be the beginning of that. It'll be a, a shorter video, um, a little overview, and cover maybe the first chapter or two, uh, which is pretty, pretty juicy, actually. Um, some great stories there in that part. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe, thumbs up. Love to have you join um, us. We're a group of KJV-only Bible-believing Christians. We believe on the blood of Jesus Christ for our salvation, once saved, always saved. Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, according to the Gospels of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, John 3, 16, and many other places, died on a cross on purpose to forgive you for your sins. Uh, the Messiah died for the entire world, and um, it is a free gift, and nothing else needs to be added to that salvation as long as you believe on Jesus Christ's blood to forgive you and wash away your sins. Amen. All right, so the book of Daniel, um, the author is Daniel according to Jesus Christ at Matthew 24, 15, and Mark 13, 14. So, Daniel's the author. Uh, it was written about 607 B.C. to 534 B.C.-ish. Um, the word Daniel means, my judge is God. So that's what the word Daniel means. Um, what else about the book? I mean, there's certainly a lot of other interesting things. Um... A lot of Jewish rabbis didn't want to recognize Daniel as a prophet, but we know Daniel as one of the most key people in the Bible. He's actually going to rule um, from Jerusalem with Jesus in the Millennial Kingdom and be the leader of the Jews, essentially. Of course, underneath Jesus Christ. Um, and, um, you know, that Daniel was a prophet indeed. Um, so we're going to look at chapter 1. And it's the grooming of the Israel cap captives. And so we have a story here where, on a backdrop of, um, you know, the kingdom of Israel has been captured by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And it reads in verse 1, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, so that's the, the Isra Israeli king, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, under Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave... Jehoiakim, king of Judea, into his hands with a part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, of the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So, of course, we see here um, what happened. And what happens next is that the king tells um, one of their leaders to, to find all the, all the, all the um, smart, intelligent, sort of like an intelligence test, um, that the Jews had, essentially. And the, the wise men, um, those that had understanding of science um, and had special abilities so they could be, you know, taught the Chaldean way, essentially the, the way of uh, the King Nebuchadnezzar. And amongst these, uh, verse 7, unto whom the prince of the Enix gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar unto Haana of Shadrach and unto Mishael, Meshach and unto Azria Abednego. So those are the, those were like the four main characters here in this in this chapter. That we're going to see um, how how they deal with this situation of captivity. Um, and of course, Daniel proposed in his own heart. It says this in verse eight that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank, therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And of course the eunuch is, is worried about, okay, well what happens because the king wants to take all these people from Israel and put them with, put them on a certain diet of meats and wine and, and certain rations to see how they, how they, how they grow, how, you know, how they, over a period of time, do they become healthier, do, you know, did they become smarter, all these kind of great things. Verse 9, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enix. So this prince, you know, obviously adorned Daniel because God allowed it to be so. And Daniel makes a, um, 
makes an agreement with this prince of the eunuchs. Um, verse 12, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. So give, give us ten days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So what's pulse? Pulse is an is a Arab, Arabic English for vegetables, essentially. So uh, technically edible seeds of legumous plants like beans and peas, essentially, is what he ate instead of the meat because, um, and I'm sure he didn't want to eat the meat because this meat was probably, um, in a ceremonial way, given up to false gods. And that was the reason probably for being against the meat, if I were to guess. Um, and verse 13, then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. So this was, you know, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat as thou seest deal with thy servants. So essentially like, hey, compare us to them at the end of 10 days. And so this was approved, of course, in verse 14, and then 15, and at the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So of course they were healthier. And then that was going to be something that the king saw good, not bad, uh, of course. Um, 18, and now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the princes of the Enoch brought them into before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king com can communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they, they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than the magicians and astrologers that were in his own realm. So not only did God bless them with you know health because of, of not eating the king's meat, but also wisdom and intelligence and smartness, ten times more so than even the, um, the special astrologers and magicians, of course, that the king had at his disposal. There we look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, verse 19. Um, and so, you know, what you'll see here um, is we learn some lessons. Uh, the most common meals afforded an opportunity to, to witness. He was able to, to witness um, 8 through 14. And, and, and Daniel was able to think in his heart. And so he, and so he, and so he is. Verses, um, verse 8 goes to Pro, uh, Proverbs 23, 7. Let no man despise the youth. Just sort of something that is is first first Timothy four twelve and human uh, opposition is overcome by usually kind solicitation. Um, so if you're ever in that kind of situation, remember that because what happened was Daniel pleaded with the eunuch to to hear his 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 ways, and of course that solicitation was accepted, and God took care of those that take care of Him. Essentially, in verse seventeen, as He gave them understandings and and dreams and 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 all these things. Um, and that's a, just a beautiful ending of chapter one. I'm going to probably stop here. I'm not going to continue to go forward with chapter two. We'll do chapter two next time. Again, I didn't go quite verse by verse, but that's probably what I'll do. I probably won't read every verse and go through it, but I'll probably sort of pick up key passages and that way we can learn the book of Daniel together. It's, it's a blessing. Daniel certainly was one of the most righteous people, although he had some major flaws. Um, as we'll see, but Daniel was perceived to be, um, you know, very righteous. God bless. Have a great day.